so hopefully you know that this meeting uh, workshop <laughs> is called um, Facilitating Small Groups Online. Hopefully that's the reason why you're here. Um, so we're just going to spend the next 45 minutes or so um, talking with one another and hearing from some people who um, are part of the deanery and have been part of um, facilitating small groups online since COVID-19 began. Um, and hopefully getting to share with one another what we're learning. That's the whole idea of these workshops is just to share learning and hopefully to come out better with better ideas off the back of it. Um, so in a moment, I'm going to be interviewing a few people from the Deanery about their experiences relating to uh, small groups online. Um, during each interview and during the whole session, if you want to ask any questions, please either feel free to pop them in the chat um, and then there'll also be moments where we pause for you to ask your questions out loud if you would like to do that. Hopefully, if we have time at the end, we'll have a couple of minutes in the breakout room and the simple question will be this. What is the one thing you'll take away from today? Um, so feel free to keep that in the back of your mind as we go through. Um, facilitating small groups online. Now, obviously, small groups um, encompasses quite a broad range of activity. We might be thinking about discipleship courses. We might be thinking about prayer courses, perhaps contexts like home groups where people already know each other. But we might also be thinking about groups where people are coming together for the first time, whether they're exploring faith or they're in some sort of connect group environment. Um, and so there are different challenges that are posed um, by those. Sometimes we're trying to create community where one wasn't. Sometimes we're trying to replicate the kind of group that we did in the room um, online. But the hope is that um, through this session, you'll be able to draw out some principles that apply to small groups in all sorts of different contexts. Um, as a show of hands, can we just find out whether in a church context or outside of a faith context, how many of you have been part of some sort of online small group since uh, March this year? So any small group type activity, great. So uh, that means that um, I hope all of you have some experience to contribute to this and please do feel free to share your own experience and reflections as we go through. Um, but the first area that we're going to look at is specifically exploring faith courses online. How can we make that work? How can we make it accessible and um, engaging for people to start dipping their toe in the water of faith online? And uh, Matt Key has very kindly come to join us. Um, hang on, let me spotlight you, Matt. Um, <laughs> so, Matt, do you want to uh, just tell us a bit about your role specifically in relation to small groups? Sure. So, um, I'm Matt. Lovely to see you all. Um, my, I'm a church planting curate based at St Augustine's over in the east of Ipswich. Um, but I've also recently taken on this role, which we're, we're still working out what it looks like as a um, deanery alpha coordinator. Um, which basically I think I'm um, just a point of contact for any alpha or similar kind of courses um, related questions, um, someone who can support those who are looking to sort of up their alpha or perhaps start something like that for the first time. Um, I think I'm basically just here, here to help and cheer on all the wonderful things that are going on in um, that part of our churches. Great, it's great to have you with us. Um, uh, the reason I was really keen to have you on this uh, session is in the middle of the summer, I happened across an interview that Nikki Gumbel, the founder of Alpha, did um, about running Alpha online and what their experience at HTB Church in London had been of running Alpha courses online. The fascinating thing about it was that Nikki Gumbel had previously been kind of skeptical of whether these sorts of things can work online. And he basically in this interview unequivocally said, I'm a total convert to doing exploring faith courses online um, and helping people to explore faith online. And we're going to keep doing it because we're seeing uh, more people come through the courses than than ever before. Uh, I'd love to just get your take on why it is that that seems to be working or whether you do think that that is working and whether that's something that you're seeing elsewhere as well, that online groups work well for exploring faith. Sure. Um, I, I really think that Nikki is probably just echoing the thoughts and experiences of lots of us. 
Um, I certainly um, was very skeptical about um, how or if alpha or similar courses could work online. Um, and I've had to eat my words like Nikki. Um, I think some of the some of the reasons that that certainly us at St Augustine's and HTB and lots of other churches have found um, Alpha Online really taking off. So I think it, um, I think first it appeals to different people, um, perhaps especially those for whom a church building or in-person interaction might be a barrier in some way to um, to coming and being part of a course like that. Um, I think pragmatically, Alpha Online tends to be a lot shorter than an in-person session. It doesn't include the meal. Often the videos are sent around to watch in your own time. So it can be done in 40 minutes, maybe an hour, something like that, which is easier to fit into busy lives. Um, and I also think that there's something about the, um, the comfort of being in your own home and able to just press stop at any point if ever you're uncomfortable, that just, I found it helps people to relax. People seem to be opening up quicker in our small groups. Than they, um, than they have done, certainly in my experience, in person, which, yeah, just really blew me away. It wasn't what I expected. That's fascinating. Um, can you talk through a bit maybe of what you're hearing from people who have been running them or your own experience um, doing it at St Augustine's? Kind of really practically, the Zoom room opens. How do you start to welcome people that first week in a way that starts to put them at ease? Because we know or some of us will know that alpha kind of centers around a meal often when you do it in person and that's a big mm. part of bonding the group and getting people relaxed um how, how do you kind of open those sessions in a way that gets people at ease um so we've tried to make it as much and i can only speak from my experience and i've heard a few stories from around of doing similar things what we do in in an in-person alpha is we try and find some silly little game um, to to break down some walls. Um, I, I did a bit of youth work in my previous life. And what you do at the start of a session is just find an excuse to put everyone at ease, do something silly together, say a ridiculous rhyme, whatever it is to break some walls down. Um, and so on the last Alpha Online, I think one small group, we did the Desert Island game. And we kind of welcomed people, said, hi, I'm Matt. I'm part of the team at St Augustine's how did you hear about alpha and then the next thing we go into before any kind of deep conversation is if you were stuck on an, a desert island what mixtape would you have with you or what two items something like that or you can do the name game where you have to be you know um brilliant bex or marvelous matt or whatever you might be um something like that we've found just helps to helps to relax people into conversation and it often throws up some points of overlap and interest. Right. So I'd love to get talking about those deeper conversations and how you facilitate those online in a minute. But you just mentioned there about asking people how they've come along to your alpha. Um, how are you kind of connecting people into the alpha course? Are they people who have been invited through church people or just seen it online? Um, we, we always get a mixture of different people coming from all sorts of walks of life. Um, I, I think there's no there's no substitute there's no better way of getting the word around than word of mouth um something that we're trying to develop at St Augustine's and have been since long before I turned up um is this culture of invitation where mm. where we're trying to teach and model that inviting people into um situations where you can explore faith um isn't an optional extra it's uh, a central core part of what it is to follow Jesus um and so the majority of our guests come from people inviting their friends, their, their you know, their postie, their barber, their hairdresser, whoever. Um, so that, that's the, the best thing. But I also think we try to support that um, by, by using social media, by using digital assets. Um, on, on our last in-person course, we bought this. Oh, it's a bit close. We bought this. Um, for our launch party so we've got the alpha logo on there and St Augustine's and a very aspirational amount of likes really? and we got all of our guests to take a photo of themselves in in this frame 
and post it on social media and say, tag your friends, invite your friends, because um, your alpha guests are able to, you know, put things on social media and say, look, I tried this. It was actually quite fun. They're not that scary, these church people. Um, so they're, they're just two ways that we've we've tried. I like that. Um, I've got one more thing I'd love to ask you about and then we'll open it up and probably open this same question up to everybody else in the room. Um, what you've just shared really echoes really interestingly. I've got a quote from this Nicky Gumbel interview that um, I was listening to. He said, what are the advantages of Alpha Online? Everyone's in their own home. They're relaxed. They've got their own cup of tea. They've made it just how they like it. They're sitting on their own sofa. They don't have to travel. They don't have to get on public transport or drive to a venue. Uh, we've got two Muslims in our group. It was really hard for them to arrive at a church building, but this has removed a barrier. Uh, at the end of the evening, it finishes at nine rather than 9.15. It's shorter. Uh, when it ends, they don't have to get on a bus or a tube to get home or get in a car and drive home. It's so relaxed. If they don't like it, all they have to do is leave the call. They can just leave the meeting. Uh, it's so much easier for them. It's more accessible for them. Then the conversation works better. And then he says, uh, then there is this extraordinary thing, which again, I would never have predicted. In fact, I would have predicted the exact opposite. They're more open online than they are in person. So like you said, that is contrary to perhaps what we would expect. So I'd love to hear your thoughts on how we facilitate real depth of conversation and dare I say, life-changing conversation in an online format and then we'll open that question out to everyone as well mm. wow that's a, <laughs> that's a great question i think um i think that we have so we've done now two holy spirit weekends or what used to be weekends and are now a couple of hours on a saturday morning for us um and I think what we found is that the important the important kind of factors of having those really life changing moments and seeing people connect with God for the first time or, or reconnect with God after a long time has been um, building building that relationship in the first place of trust um, where people know that you're normal that you know they hear about your cat and when the conversation you have with the taxi driver on the way home just these little little things that, that build that relationship so that we can trust each other so that we can talk about the meaty stuff of life. Um, we found that for things like prayer ministry, um, which we'd really encourage for Alpha, um, that, that has worked better in even smaller groups. So perhaps just like one or two leaders with, with one guest at any one time. Um, just because just things sometimes come out of prayer ministry which might not be appropriate or people might not want to share in a larger group um so that's been that's been kind of our experience but i think we've also been trying to stress that actually theologically the christian faith is a physical tactile faith you know we have real bread real wine and there's never actually a substitute for that and so we are always working towards and kind of yearning towards this um this physical this in-person relationship but the stuff that's been going on online is just this incredible opportunity god's given us to have a um a big front door and a big shop window for people who we might not have encountered beforehand wow that's awesome so um let me open that out then um does anyone have any particular questions following up on what Matt's just said or some um, of their own ideas about uh, particularly facilitating those the depth of conversation in an online format? I'm going to open that out to anyone who'd like to speak. Bob. So my question's a bit silly. Really. I liked your frame. Where did you um, where did you order it from? I have no idea. Amy did it. Um, but I can find out if anyone would like to know where we got one of those from. Yeah. Yes, please. Yes, Chris. Yeah. Um, when you reached the end of the Alpha course, um, what then happens in terms of keeping a group together or um, assimilating them into some form of 
church group, um, because some people, as you said, would still find it difficult to come to an Anglican church service. I think that's such a um, such a real issue, um, and we certainly haven't got it perfect at St Augustine's. But some of the things that we've been trying um, are so on the on our previous Alpha Online, we had one small group um, which really gelled, and what we actually did was we um, we created a new group we we call our small groups connect groups at um, yeah. our church and so we created a new one of them which is actually spread over quite a large geographical area and wouldn't work um in person but that they're meeting once a month online and continuing that way um other situations we've we've tried to find um an accessible small group that's already in existence I mean, actually, Anne, who's on this call, heads up our connect groups and helps us find ones that um, that really work for people. Right. Um, but yeah, so it's try, trying to find the right things for the right people because you get this yeah. diverse bunch on Alpha um, and there's not one, one fix for all of them. Mm. No. One final question before we move on, anyone? Well, just one more. <laughs> Sorry to hog this. But, um, yeah. Um, when you're in session, uh, do I take it these are all on Zoom or something similar? And um, if, if someone has a particularly personal question in the middle of your running the course itself, do you break out in some way to enable that question to be put? Um, so we, we certainly use Zoom. It'd be great to hear hear what others who have run similar courses are using, because um, there's lots of options out there that'd be interesting. Um, in in the context of conversation, if someone has asked something in the context of that that particular group, unless it's really outrageous and we certainly need to for others' benefit to kind of shut that down, um, then. And it, I can't even think of something that we would. Then we, we try and answer as much as possible or respond to as much as possible yeah. in the context of that group. So it's not us leaders um, seen as separate from the guests, but it's something we're doing together, journeying on together. Thank you. Um, Matt, just quickly, how can people take this conversation forward with you if they would like to develop Alpha um, in their context? Yeah, I, I would be delighted if there's anything I can do to, to support, to um, to encourage. Uh, if you've got any questions, pop me an email. I'll put my email address in the chat, if that's okay, Bex. Yes. Um, and then if anyone would like to get in contact, please do, and I'll be more than happy to chat further. Thank you, Matt. Thanks so much. Um, if you have any other thoughts or questions, please do feel free to pop them in the chat um, for Matt. Perhaps we'll be able to get back to them. But we've also got uh, some of the team who ran a youth alpha um, over lockdown at St. Mary La Tower. Um, so Charlotte and Andrew, do you mind just giving us a wave? Just so people know who you are. Um, so uh, I'd love to know, first of all, um, just how many people you had in the team for it and what kind of the, the team to participant ratio was on that either charlotte do you want to go yep yeah um but there's six of us andrew in the end in terms of leaders or whether i think it might have been five there were five um and we had four young people or yeah. five young people four. um so when we were running it, we realized pretty early on. So this was something that went out to the whole of the choir at um, St. Mary Le Tower. And we didn't have obviously that much of um, a huge, huge takeout. And so um, it wasn't all five of us who were there as leaders each week. So we met half an hour beforehand to pray and half an hour afterwards to pray and kind of debrief. And I think that that was quite a significant part of um of our process in terms of making sure that we felt like we were doing the right things week on week um but yeah so we we were pretty evenly spread um i i wouldn't necessarily recommend i don't know how you feel about it andrew but i wouldn't 
go for 50 50 split of leaders and young people normally um it's just how it ended up sure. yeah um, and, and one of the um team was very kind um in a way in, in not participating in the actual call um, but then joined us beforehand and, 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 and afterwards. And we tried to sort of divvy out leading it. So everybody um, sort of did d different bits, uh, bits of it. Um, I, 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 there was certainly the odd time where I just felt that, that all the adults talked far too much. But I did talk to the, some of the kids afterwards. They didn't seem to mind so much, but that's probably because they're just used to it. I mean, it, it, it's a different demographic from what you or a different setup from what you might normally get in that they were all members of the choir. So they were used to being lectured at great length by people anyway. So, um, but I, I do think the online nature of it probably created a lower bar for doing it than I don't know what you think, Charlotte, than, than, than might otherwise have happened. Um, because I think everybody just went, well, yeah, why not? Let's just go right. for it and see what happens. I, I, I think it would have taken longer uh, to get to that point if it had all been physical. Yeah, yeah. So, um, Charlotte, perhaps you could run us through um, kind of how you hosted a, a typical session. Yeah, so um, in the half an hour beforehand when we were um, praying, we also made sure that there was... A different person in terms of leadership um, running or asking questions so that there was a variety in terms of the voices and we also thought through the activities so I think something that uh, for me is quite important in leading online small groups is that you have a structured enough session but not too structured so people feel comfortable and they know where they're going um, but there's also that space and that kind of capacity for having open conversations and that time for allowing um allowing people to know that they've got a bit of kind of wiggle room but i in in making sure that everyone knows what they're doing before you start i think that also helps put everybody at their ease mm. because you can't look kind of sideways at someone across the room or elbow them on zoom so, <laughs> so um so to start with i think it feels a little bit more artificial because you're saying oh who's going to ask this teeny weeny question but it just helps with the flow of the session so um so people came in kind of mostly on time but giving about five five ten minutes wiggle room of people coming and having a chat and um because everyone knew one another um because of the choir we didn't need to necessarily do as much kind of um making people feel at their ease or kind of um icebreaker kind of things but I think you would do it normally in a youth group as as Matt had said and with people feeling comfortable with one another but so we had that um for 10 minutes and then we um worked through the kind of activities the set questions um and then had about 10 minutes at the end for anyone to voice anything else that they wanted to say or ask any questions and we made sure that we built that in so um yeah so that people had space to do that and then half an hour praying and debriefing at the end as well great and did you find that um conversation happened quite naturally or were there certain techniques that you employed in order to kind of get conversation going and get people contributing yeah I don't know if it was just the weather or something but some weeks it flowed really well other weeks it took a little bit more work and it didn't seem to be particularly it didn't seem to particularly be about the topic it wasn't that they were really tricky well yeah so I don't know if it was just the weather or something but um so so if conversation was a bit more difficult um we tried to do things that weren't just screen based so um go away and grab an object that reminds you of such and such, or next week, can you bring something? So to break it up so that people are getting up and they're thinking about something in their own homes, in their own kind of space that makes them think about faith. So just doing little things like that. Um, as Matt's, Matt said, kind of about sharing your own life and talking about your cat, I think that all of the leaders, um, Kind of were on the journey as well so 
Um, so we all spoke about our own faith experience, our own questions, our own doubts and fears. In it, it was just lovely, and I I think I certainly grew through that experience. And I know any time I've been involved in an exploring faith group, it's not only the people who you think come as a participant that grow in their faith and deepen in their relationship with Jesus is everyone. And so I think that that's an amazing thing that that you have you have these group of people who are coming exploring faith but you also have all of your team that are going to deepen in faith and become more and more confident in sharing that with other people so it's it's yeah it's a it's a double one way blessing I think great um so maybe just uh from each of you or one of you um what would be kind of your key takeaways from your experience of of facilitating an online small group and what would be your encouragement for others if they were looking at hosting that sort of thing do you want to go first Andrew I mean I I, I definitely say go for it I, I I think that's true anyway in terms of anything we do for God I think you just I mean, more and more convinced you just plonk yourself in the situation where God wants you to be and then you wait for the opportunity and then you kind of go for it so, um, and I, 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 th I think it was great. I think we've got to do some work now to kind of build on it. Um, but um, yeah, and, and I think maybe the encouragement is that if you'd have told me three years ago when I started singing a bit at the tower that we were going to do an alpha course with some of the kids from the choir, I probably would have been, I don't know. I mean, I would have been delighted, but I think I wouldn't have quite believed you really. So, um, you know, it's amazing what God can do. I think if you just plonk yourself in a situation that, that you feel you're called to and then pray and wait to see what happens. Thank you. So we've got a um, question, which is best, watch the video in own time or to watch it as part of the session. Um, I'll actually open that up to the whole group, anybody who has thoughts on that. So watching the video during the Zoom call itself or watching it prior. We, we did one, but I'm just hopefully going to be part of another online alpha where we've decided to do two. So I don't know. Uh, Robin, were you? Yeah, yeah. I think my worry is that um, the technology lets you down when you do it, try and do it online. Um, if the person hosting the video, something goes wrong. And I think there's a sense in which you put some responsibility on the other person um, to, to make the effort to watch it during the week. Um, but as long as the point is made that if for whatever reason you're not able to watch it, don't don't worry. Mm. So I think my, my personal preference is to watch it in advance, I think. Sure. Charlotte? Yeah. Um, so one thing I probably should have said about the session is that um, we did a recap of the video just in a couple of sentences at the beginning of every session, just in case people hadn't seen it. Um, because, I mean, the likelihood is that if I watch something, there are always things that I will have missed or I might have just had a long day and I will have forgotten. So I think it's good to have a refresher at the beginning of a session anyway. So for those people that haven't, or yeah, uh, yeah, so that was helpful. Thank you. Tracy, did you want to say something? I was just gonna say that the beauty of people watching it at home before the meeting is that you've sent it to them. So they've actually got it. So you can then encourage them to re-watch if they need to, and they've got it forever to forward on to their friends and to share bits and pieces, which we encourage as well, so. Sure, that's great, thank you. Um, does anyone have any specific questions um, to Charlotte and Andrew about their experience or would like to um, contribute their own thoughts, particularly perhaps if you've been facilitating small groups with younger people um, or through children and youth ministry or anything like that? Um, I'm gonna open it out again for anyone to share. Uh, Robin, do you want to go again? Our experience as a church is it's been very difficult to get um, young people to be anywhere near the camera. 
Um, in fact, I was surprised. I mean, this isn't a, a, a particularly spiritual thing, but we did a quiz and I found out that we had young people that were there and really enjoying being part of the small group in the quiz, but there was no way in a million years that you would know they're actually there. So I don't know whether that's been an issue that camera shy young people. Shall I? Um, yes, um, I think that, um, I think because the group was quite small, there wasn't necessarily an opportunity for them not to be on camera um, because it would have been quite noticeable. But I think that, um, I think that self image is something that had come through alongside um, people people being quite honest um, and vulnerable about their mental health. Mm -hmm. So I think that that was a really, that was a really good thing. Um, and I think it's really important to be supportive. And I think that probably for all of us, we've seen a lot more of our own image looking back at us um, over the last kind of few months, which is quite disconcerting. <laughs> um, and knowing that you can turn, turn your self view off. So at least you're not, seeing yourself if that's something that you find distracting is, is quite a helpful thing um but yeah that's a really interesting point robin thank you again maybe not a typical group and i think they have been doing other stuff and continue to do stuff on zoom as part of the whole choir thing so it's interesting from karen in the chat i have two teenage children my daughter joined several online christian groups during lockdown but my son has avoided zoom like the plague he uses other online platforms but mostly where he can't be seen or see yourself so that's an interesting one to to continue asking how to approach that malcolm yeah just a quick question it's about safeguarding actually because we're talking about young children here um is there what process do you go to obviously get the per parents permission to do that would you not if you would got permission would you not let them in because obviously there is a safeguarding issue here thank you um so did you have a specific process um for how you went well, through again we were very fortunate i don't know the details but but um there was a guy who's like the choir assistant from the tower uh, who does all of their safeguarding stuff. And of course, they've got that in spades because it's a choir, they're meeting regularly, they have lessons. Um, so all of that was basically piggybacked on the back of the processes they'd already developed. So again, we were very fortunate. We didn't have to invent anything, did we, Charlotte, really? We just sort of um, piggybacked on, on, on all the agreements they'd already had. And the parents typically are very involved in you know, and some of them also sing in the choir as well. So, you know, it, it, it's a lot easier from that point of view. Yeah. So we, oh yeah, Leanne, sorry. I was following on with the safeguarding question as well, really. Um, my, my teenage son's been attending our youth group um, online. And one of the requirements of that has been that parents have got to be in the background. And of course, with Alpha, some of the young people will be saying some quite sensitive things. So was there that, that requirement would for the parents not to be keeping anything you know, to be, for the parents to be keeping everything quite silent as well but. Charlotte so I was involved in another youth alpha at the same time and so for the safeguarding process for that we again had to have parent permission but we asked that just on the first call they were in the background um for the first kind of five minutes and then they could stay for as long as they wanted um, and the invitation was always there if they wanted to be there in the background then they were more than welcome to be but um but obviously they weren't the main focus of the conversation so we asked them not to not to kind of butt in um but that invitation was always open but we stipulated just for the first one making sure that there was somebody else in the background just for the first five minutes but other than that um we didn't because for one, yeah, for, for one particular um, person who came, um, the parent was there all of the time and we were aware that that then it naturally just changed the dynamic because as you say, um, when you're exploring faith and particularly if you're showing, showing kind of 
doubts or questions about things, um, I think you get quite a different answer sometimes if, if a parent is there in the background than if not. So um, following on from this, we can circulate. There are a few dioceses that um, kind of did some guidelines and some templates for how you might go about doing safeguarding, particularly for youth groups on Zoom. Um, so we can circulate that following this meeting, um, if that would be useful to people. Sure. Um, Thank you so much, Charlotte and Andrew, for sharing your experiences of doing that. Um, what I'd like to do now is open it up for a kind of quick fire from those of you who are running other types of courses. Um, uh, if you could just quickly let us know how you're running it and what you're learning, and then um, we'll just open up the conversation from there. Um, I know I have earmarked a few of you as people I know who are hosting courses at the moment. Um, so Chris, I know you're very kindly here uh, from St Andrews Rushmere and you are part of the Beatitudes, you're running, is, am I right in saying the Beatitudes course and the prayer course is running at St Andrews Rushmere? That's right. We, we start at the opposite end of the spectrum from Youth Alpha uh, in the sense that most of our um, people at St Andrews are over 70 and um, and moreover we have a number of people who are resistant to using Zoom okay. so um, effectively what um, we're doing is sending out um, the links to video clips where with the prayer course for instance we sent out the, the link um, uh, I would do a pricey and, and some instructions and um, I would then also create a worksheet um, which was returned via email and then a composite worksheet uh, um, sent out. The same thing is happening with um, the, the um, uh, course on the Beatitudes which is um, the Church of England Pilgrim course but adapted slightly obviously because again, there are audio clips and a short video for, for people to use there. Um, and um, what we're finding is that getting the, the conversations going is a, is a bit more difficult. We tend to have conversations at church on a Sunday when we have a service, we will talk about the course, but um, uh, there is no substitute, I think, for the, the house group situation. And that's really how it started because we were, we were one week into the Lent course when lockdown started and we had to try and find some, some way of um, keeping that going. Yeah. But yes, we've now got two courses running, more people involved, um, and we are getting some genuine questions, particularly around um, types of prayer and particularly around unanswered prayer. Um, and it strikes me that that prayer course is a really good course for people who may have finished Alpha and who are experiencing prayer for the first time because it's, it's so good and basic and down to earth. Thank you so much for sharing that. That's really encouraging. Um, does anyone have any specific questions about that or running similar courses in their context? Gobsmacked. Right. Um, Robin, was that a hand? Sorry. No, it was a thumbs up. Charlotte. Um, I just wondered in terms of size of groups online and um, doing small groups, um, what kind of sizes people have found particularly works or doesn't work or um, yeah, just numbers. It's a great. I would, uh, yeah, I would say six, six to eight is is probably optimum. Um, I'm, I'm running the second prayer course at the moment with four of us. Um, and I think possibly we will get more conversation going with the smaller number. But um, no, I, 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 think, I, I think if you had too many people, just um, to, to manage that, I think online would be very difficult. Mm. Any other thoughts about numbers specifically? Alicia? 
Yes, I'm running the um, Kintsugi Hope Wellbeing Groups online at the moment. We've got two running. And um, what's happening with that is you have up to 12 people, but most of the conversations tend to happen in breakout rooms. Okay. So they tend to happen in groups of threes or fours, something like that. Great. In using breakout rooms, do other people have kind of number sizes that they tend to aim for in the specific breakout room context? What about on the, you? because you're also running the Growing Leaders course online. I know that Andy and Bob, you're also involved in that. Do you use breakout rooms in Growing Leaders course? How yes. You, and there that? again, we tend to have sort of threes or fours, something like that. Um, mm. And that seems to work well. Um, hmm. Andy, did, were you about to say something or I'll go to Bob? Bob. Yeah, I'll go to Bob. I was actually going to mention Andy. So we did something called speed dating, but it wasn't speed dating, but it was, um, you got thrown into a breakout room for like, I don't know, do we give them a minute, Andy? Just a minute. With someone random and you had a question to discuss. I think it was like the way that you do your shopping or something like that. Um, and that everybody really enjoyed that, I think, because then you get thrown into another room and you have a different question. So it's just something fun that you could do. Mm. That's great. Thank you. Leanne. Having been one of the victims of that, yes, it was fun. <laughs> 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 and yet you still and describe yourself as a victim. So mixed <laughs> results. <laughs> and the really. breakout rooms are really good as well. Great. Yeah. Um, I do want to fit, I feel like this conversation could go on forever and I feel like this 45 minutes has gone much too quickly, uh, but I do want to finish on time because that's a good, uh, that, that makes people feel happier at the end of a call, I think. But um, perhaps we could do a real quick fire. Um, those who haven't uh, been interviewed, um, I'd love to know quickly either one thing that um, you're taking away from this or if you are running a group or wanting to run a group, I'd love for you to share that. And I'd love for us to note it and, and be praying for those people and those group ideas. Um, so let's just go around quickly. Um, so Leanne, I wonder if we could hear from you either something you've taken away or what your context is. Um, something I'm gonna take away is just that, that praying beforehand, because often I end up being one of the people um, with our Zoom coffee, coffee church after the session after the service sorry um and sometimes people start to have their own conversations which is wonderful but you can see that other people want to have a conversation and be part of it and I don't know what it's about because they don't get the opportunity to as we would if we were all in person at church because you could just say I'll go and chat to someone else about this so I'm gonna I'm gonna pray beforehand and afterwards as well but, but, great thank you uh Marlene can I go to you yeah, I think the thing I've the thing I've really grasped from today, thank you, is that it works. Um, which I know sounds silly, but I have been completely cynical about how on earth because I in in my life I've led a lot of small groups for a lot of reasons, mm. and I rely so much on everyone being in the room. I just didn't see how that was mm. ever going to be possible. So I'm really. Uh, I'm really uplifted by hearing that it works and that gives me strength to try. Thank you so much for sharing that. That's really mm -hmm. encouraging for everyone, I'm sure. Um, Anne, can I go to you next? Uh, <clears throat> yes. Um, at St Augustine's, we had lots of groups before lockdown, but unfortunately, so our home groups, a lot of them haven't been able to continue. Um, because not everybody's on Zoom or has got that the wherewithal. Um, those groups that have are, are flourishing. They're doing, you know, they're carrying on using a study book and everything else. So that's good. And new people have joined during during the time. So the groups have obviously have expanded. So that's really, I think that's quite encouraging. Um, my person personally in my group um we haven't ever tried breakout rooms i've got a group of nine and actually i think perhaps certain things we might try two groups mm. great 
Thank you. Thank you for sharing. Andy? Yeah, so I'm, uh, in, I'm starting something called a Green Church, and we have um, been using small groups just for our core team, but we're actually just starting to interact with people who aren't Christians or who are on the fringes of church. And I'm just thinking about ways of bringing them into small groups and how we might do that. And um, just encouraged by people's feedback that actually it does work um, as well, because that's, I'm, I'm quite, I have been quite a skeptic about it. So um, yeah, I'm going to encouraged by that. Great, thank you. Alicia. Yeah, I'm, I'm really encouraged about the um, exploring faith um, things. And um, yeah, and I think the Kintsugi groups, I just reiterate, breakout rooms are fantastic. And um, Kintsugi, when you're talking about well-being, I was also very skeptical, but mm -hmm. apparently it has the being at home and on your own computer has the disinhibition effect is what happens. So actually people are able to be more open. That's great, thank you. Tracy. I think um, that small groups are kind of the way forward. I think obviously we're so uncertain as to how big we'll ever be able to have back in our homes if it was like a home group or whatever. Um, and I think the uh, personal effect of having smaller groups, um, it, it kind of, you can really gel and you're really accountable to each other and you can be really brave and honest. So I could see that small groups of around, you know, five or six really is the way forward. So just trying to encourage people by word of mouth to get into a group, mm. um, even if it's three, three to six. Um, it, is really something I'm really kind of um, pursuing and that everybody's you know got that connection across the week and um, yeah thank you thank you uh, Bob um, yes yeah, so I'm gonna run a couple of alphas in January um, and I think I wasn't sure about whether to put the video first and I was sort of convinced that you had to watch the video together, but I've been convinced that you don't have to. And I think it actually would be better not to do that. So thanks for everybody's comment. I think one is the time element. And another is, I think you can, when you watch a video on your own, you can really just lose yourself in it. But I think if you're watching a video and you can see everybody, <laughs> I find that off putting because I yeah. think that people might be watching me, even though they're probably not. But there's always that thought. So, you know, just watch the video on your, in your own time. So, Yeah, that's a really useful yeah. comment. Thank you. Uh, Robin. I like uh, the idea, exemplified mostly by Charlotte, the idea of getting uh, household objects and I think other simple ways of uh, one minute responses that help to break the ice. And I, because I think they're really good. We've had a problem with drawing some people into to small groups. So I think having them break the ice by doing something that everybody can do simply. So I'm very grateful for that as an idea. Thank you. Great. And um, Malcolm, come to you, last but not least. That's the last, is that all right? Okay. <laughs> um, I have run um, Faith Pictures, incidentally, on online. We're starting another one next week. That works quite well. Yeah, the Church Army Faith Pictures. Um, we started midstream because we started one and then we had to stop because of lockdown. But, you know, it, that works well. Alpha's the interesting one that we're trying to get an alpha together. But there is the resistance to people saying, I can't do, I don't want to do alpha because we don't have the meal. I know we've talked about this earlier on. So I'm looking at Matt. I may perhaps have a word with you sometime. Just give me some more ideas. Yeah, because really, if we don't do these things online, what do we do? Don't do anything. That's what it comes down to, isn't it? Yeah. Um, yeah. We don't want to do that, do we? Um, so um, alpha seems to be the sticking point. Things like faith pictures, that's fine. We seem to get people on it. So, okay. And uh, just give me some ideas anyway. Thank you. That's really interesting. Thank you, Malcolm. Um, I think there's a lot more to say about this. And I'm thinking off the top of my head now that perhaps this is a group that we should convene again to talk a bit more about small groups. Um, can I get a quick show of hands for anyone who might be interested in that, if I could find a time when... Great. OK, that's really encouraging. Um, fantastic. Um, I'm going to pray quickly for us to close. If you need to dash off, please do feel free to. But let me just pray for, for um, all of you. 
Heavenly Father, I thank you so much for each person in this Zoom meeting. Um, I thank you that you have just heard uh, all of the different things that people are a part of and the things that they're encouraged by. I thank you for the opportunity to be encouraged by one another. Uh, I almost forget that I'm not sitting in the room with this group of people. I thank you um, that uh, you and the work of your spirit is not bound by um, any of the constraints that we're currently facing. And I just pray for um, each person as they take this forward in their own context. Uh, I pray that you would encourage and equip them, uh, make them uh, see that things are possible that perhaps they thought were not possible. Um, and we praise you uh, for the fact that we have good news worth sharing in every climate and over every format. In Jesus' name, amen. <laughs>